I took my extra coarse diamond stone and put it in my vise and that lets me go from side to side uh, rather than having to try to move my hands so much and it keeps the same motion. It just, I just have to switch directions. That way I can do both sides and I can switch hands like this. Okay, now we are about 30 minutes in to flattening the backs of the, the chisels, or the back of each side of the chisel. And you can see now that we are flat all the way across except for the corner. And here we are flat all the way across except for the edge. So I'm just going to keep working it down until I'm flat all the way across the bevel. Okay, so now I have about 45 minutes of flattening the back on the extra coarse stone and hopefully you can see that we are very close to being flat all the way across and it, it meets almost perfectly here in a 90 degree. Now I've, so far I've only used the extra core so we're going to be using three other grits so we will be taking this down a little bit more but I think at this point we're close enough that we can go ahead and start roughing out the bevel. I'm going to be using the extra course to rough that out as well so I think I'll go ahead and do that now and then once we have the rough shape of the bevel in the back um, of the chisel then we can start taking it through the other grits and polishing it up. I'll clamp my stone as high as I can up in the vise that way I can sharpen the bevel by putting it on the edge like this and then we will run down the surface of the stone sharpening the bevel. This is the first corner chisel I've ever owned, so I've never sharpened one before, so this will be a learning experience for us. Okay, so I've been working on the bevel now for probably about 45 minutes and I'm still using the extra course. I'm just trying to get the shape of the bevel the way I want it before we start moving and moving um, down in grit or actually up in grit, I'm sorry. Um, but you can, uh, you can see that the uh, bevel is nice and flat across and um, starting to get a nice sharp surface. I've already cut myself twice, so it's very sharp. I just changed my grit to the coarse stone. So we'll start working on polishing the bevel that we have created. I've been working with the core stone now for maybe five minutes and you can already see that the, that the uh, bevel 
in the back of the chisel is already beginning to polish really nicely. I mean, it took a lot of work with the extra coarse stone to get the shape that we want, but now that we're starting to polish with the other stones, it's going very rapidly. So I'm gonna go ahead and go up and grit now. And now we'll go to the uh, fine stone. I'm just using a little bit of uh, detergent and water. And really what that does is it just helps carry the steel chips or the shavings away. Okay, so I've spent about 10 minutes with both the fine and the extra fine stones. And I've done both the back and the backs of the chisel and also the bevel. And you can see how nice and polished it is. It's razor sharp as well. Um, I mean, this is a corner chisel, so the main purpose of it is to clean out the corners of a mortise. Um, it won't be used for paring and other things that other chisels are used for so as long as it's um, as long as you have a nice 90 degree corner and it's relatively sharp it's going to do the it's going to do the task at hand but uh, I'm really happy with that so I'm going to go ahead and strop it a little bit and then we can move on to the handle I was trying to think of what size handle I'd like to have and I definitely think that this handle is too small for the chisel. Um, this is my bar inch and a half chisel and it's a little bit longer but I never really thought the handle on it was long enough either. So this is kind of what I'm thinking for the handle for the uh, corner chisel. So this is the old handle and, and here is the marking for where the socket will be. And we're gonna make it about a third longer than what it is now, probably four or five inches. And I kinda want the um, chisel to have a gradual taper from front to back. And then we will um, also put the uh, ring on the end. So that kinda shows you the size of the handle that I'm planning. So I've got this piece of oak that is a little bit longer than what we'll need in the lathe. And I've actually been practicing with it um, since the lathe, I just recently finished it. But I took a piece of square stock that I had and turned it round just for practice. So I think since this is the first piece that I've turned with the lathe, it's fitting to use it for the chisel. So I'm gonna take my diagram that we just drew and bring it over and mark the length of the chisel and sort of um, the areas in which we need to take away the material. So let's get the stock spinning and then we can mark roughly the dimensions of the uh, chisel. So 
So I left the uh, markings on the, on the stock a, a little long. That way we have room to, a little room for error. Um, the area of the uh, chisel that will be in the socket is a little longer than what it needs and we can cut it off and then the area where the ring is is going to be a little long so we can trim that off as well if we need to. But this will be the rough size of the chisel handle and now to start to pare that down. What I've been working on this morning is trying to get a few different areas of the handle down to the right dimensions, or at least roughly. So I started with where the ring will be, and then the, the thickest uh, diameter, and then I'm working my way down to some um, smaller diameters where the actual socket is. So I think what I'll do is I'll pick like this, this area here and go down to the right thickness, and then at the uh, end of the... Uh, the socket there or the deepest portion of the socket I'll try to get that diameter and then I'll come back and try to work down to those dimensions. I'm certainly no expert at, at uh, uh, lathe work and wood turning. This is the first time I've ever done this and this is just what makes sense to me. So if you have some advice please share it with me. I've definitely found it's a lot more work. I've definitely found that it's a lot easier to keep your chisels really sharp. So I'm kind of going back and forth between the lathe and the sharpening stones every couple minutes to try to make the work a little bit easier. You know, it's kind of interesting once you get the lathe moving you kind of forget that you're you're powering it with your foot and your leg it's kind of like riding a bike your leg just kind of gets used to the motion and uh, you don't even realize you're doing it you can see that the handle starting to take shape you can tell that the diameter is less here where the ring will be and it's more here in the middle of the uh, handle and it'll be like a nice taper and then we're getting deeper 
where the shank of the chisel will be or where the, the socket of the chisel will be. I'm honestly still a little bit surprised that this thing works. But it actually works really good.